together on this sixth Sunday of our ordinary time, gathering our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus be with each of you. And with your spirit. Standing before God's word, gathered before the altar, we are mindful of our frailty, our weakness, and our sin. We ask God for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal and forgive those who are sorry for their sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You nourish and strengthen us with word and sacrament. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came among us to share with us the good news of the breaking in of the kingdom of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us sin and bring us to everlasting life.
brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to Jews or Greeks, or to the Church of God, just as I to just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the gospel abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in the deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Son of God, the only true, clean person ever to live. He was an insider. The leper begs for his living, dependent on the scraps of mercy of a passing stranger. Jesus is surrounded by people who beg him to stay in their homes, to preach in their synagogues, to share at their table. No one wants to touch a leper. Everyone wanted Jesus to touch them. And yet, when the untouchable leper approached Jesus, Jesus responded by extending his touch to embrace the untouchable and not only healed him of leprosy, he restored the man to society. The world is still divided between insiders and outsiders. There are still too many in our world who are outsiders, our elderly, and those who are physically or mentally challenged, that are put away in institutions or isolated in nursing homes. Some are led to feel unwelcome in our churches. Some suffer economically, marginalized by zoning, city planning, or prejudice. All of these matter to 
from God. Jesus made that point clear enough in the way he treated outsiders, the leper, the prostitutes, the public sinners. What are we to do? We are here to extend the outstretched hand of God to heal brokenness, to restore people to the society, restore people to the social circle. Will it cost us? Yes, it will. Just as it cost Jesus, there were those who rejected him because he reached out to the outsiders. If we welcome the unpopular, it will cost us some of our popularity. When we help the poor, it will cost us some of our resources. When we take a stand for social justice, it may cost us our standing with the powers that be. That is the call and the privilege of following Christ. Let us look around us, in our schools, our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our world. The lepers are there, the outsiders, hoping for a healing touch. Are we up to the challenge of being the extended hand of Christ? I hope so. Amen. Let us together make our profession of faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come and judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Standing now before the Lord, let us express some of our needs in our prayer of the faith. For the church, that in imitation of Jesus, we may break down barriers and stretch our love to every corner of society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world in which so many suffer, may they share the resources of help and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sake of our community, may they find the healing power of grace and the presence of human compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our good Christian community, may we do all for the glory of God and the good of our neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who await mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual healing, that God's grace may touch them and bring them healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the departed may rejoice as they are called into fellowship with Christ, including Helen Brock. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are united with the whole community of faith, and together we make the following prayer request submitted by our parish family. Andrea Sardelli family, Roy Newman, Ralph Pearson, Bruce Lipsky, Wilfred Plutkowski, Walter and William Bilo, Chester Chinlewski, Dolores Smith, Anthony and Joseph Tundo, Anna Hensky Tundo, Mary Mauer, Valentine and Elizabeth Whitman, Magdalena Weber, Harry and Michael Kenny, Terry Kennard, and Angeline Trinkoff. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, we place ourselves and our needs before you. In the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who lives with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our loving and almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of your name, for our good and good of all its holy church. May this offering, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become, for those who do your will, the source of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ, who is our Lord. And so with angels and archangels, the whole company of saints, we praise you as together we sing. Saint Gertrude, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life, 
and I praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, so that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessing the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, and you say to us, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your name, who lives and reigns forever. so that we may always long for the food by which we truly live. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. This coming Wednesday, February 17, our Lenten journey begins. How different our world is today than it was when we started our Lenten season a year ago. As I have announced, a long-held Ash Wednesday custom will not take place this year because of the pandemic. That is, the imposition of ashes on the forehead. Instead, we will follow the European custom of sprinkling a pinch of ashes on the top of the head. 
There will be word services with ashes at noon and 4 p.m. Mass with ashes will be celebrated at 7 o'clock p.m. There will not be a public mass in the morning. Masses will be celebrated also with ashes at 6 a.m., 9 a.m., and 7 p.m. at St. Margaret of Scotland Parish. The men's club will be offering lunch and fish fries every Friday during Lent, carry out only. Check the bulletin for the menu and how to order, or go to oloahfishfry at gmail.com for details. The Stations of the Cross will not be prayed on the Fridays of Lent in the evening. You are invited to pray the Stations with our upper grade students at 3 p.m. at 3 p.m. on Fridays, February 19, March 5, and March 19. I will publish a reminder of these dates in the book. The devotion originated when pilgrims were no longer able to travel to Jerusalem and walk the way of the cross. The 14 stations are based on scriptural references and long-held traditions of the church, such as Veronica wiping the face of Jesus. If you have any old blessed palms at home, uh, please bring them to the parish center uh, Monday or Tuesday of this week, and they will be burned and used for the sprinkling of ashes on Wednesday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God continue to bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go to love and serve the Lord and one another. Amen. Thanks be to God.